There's a new street fighter on your windowsill. The weapon is peace. The word is chill. Yeah. Hi there, guys. Welcome to another episode of Displaying Model Behavior. I always find that's kind of a tongue twister when I try to say it. Welcome to another episode of Displaying Model Behavior. Doesn't really run off the tongue, but we'll get used to it. So <laughs> after over a year, We'll get used to it. Actually, it hasn't quite been a year, but we're creeping towards that. Anyway, what are we doing today? Something a little bit outside the box. We're gonna do a Q&A session, cause why the heck knock? Heck knock? Wow, I'm having one of those days today. I hope you enjoy this show. So I went to Instagram and I said, guys, ask me anything and I'll make a show out of it. So here we go. Bantha Fodder For You writes, when you eat cereal, do you put the milk or cereal in the bowl first? This is going to be one of those shows, isn't it? Yes, of course, whenever you have cereal, you put the cereal in the bowl first and then the milk. And to do otherwise would make you a complete maniac. Kingpin of Figures writes, Hey buddy, what do you make of the new Gorilla Grod? From what I've seen, no accessories and too small in size to match up with the wave. Well, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked. I don't have a huge amount of thoughts on Gorilla Grodd because I haven't been following the DC figures too closely. However, judging from a couple of little pictures I've seen, I can see what you mean. Yeah, maybe like I imagine Gorilla Grodd should be this huge, big, hulking beast of an ape. And that looks a little bit undersized compared to some DC figures. But at the same time, DC figures seem to be so randomly sized like I went into Forbidden Planet Planet today and I saw all of the various six inch is well yeah six inch DC figures but they're all over the shop so there's not much uniformity there and no accessories either yeah they probably could have done better with him Lord Fide Toys writes who would play you in a Marvel movie? And that's quite a fun one. To be honest, there's a few comparisons that I always get to different people. One very popular one, or one very common one, is Will Arnett. A lot of people say that I look like Will Arnett, so possibly not the most super heroic type actor, but I could definitely see that resemblance there. Another one that people say is that I look a little bit like Henry Cavill. So Henry Cavill, I would quite, quite happily have play me. Yeah, yeah, I think my ego would have no problem with Henry Cavill playing uh, David Display's model behavior in an MCU film. Uh, and finally, a common one I get is Skinny Pete from Breaking Bad. So yeah, <laughs> somewhere in between those, you'll probably find something that looks like me. Kia Utoit asks, a lot of collectors struggle with dust on their figures. How do you clean your figures without damaging the paintwork? Well, that is also a very good question. and I'm glad you asked because you see, if you don't dust your figures, you won't damage the paintwork. No, that actually is like both true and also a sad reflection on myself and my figure collecting. Ah, oh, I'm having a dilemma at the moment because I, you know, with the figures that are in cases in Detolfs and whatnot, they're fine. They don't tend to really get too dusty. But like these X-Men and stuff, oh, the dust. Oh, the dust is real and it's it's a big thing. And I like, I, I use, you know, a little cloth every now and then. But honestly, I think, I think the best thing is to regularly give them a little blast with one of those compressed air sprays like you use to clean computer keyboards. And the trick with that, of course, is like, don't let the dust get too much. You know, once it's like a thick layer of dust, that little spray isn't gonna do like all that much good. But if you just, every you know week or so, just give them a little It kind of helps shift things and hopefully things won't become too much like, oh God, like, like mine look. Sizzle D. Vizzle writes, which action figure line do you wish would be brought back? Now that is a really tough one because I mean, we are living in a golden age of action figures. Just anything that you can imagine pretty much, we kind of have. So it's really tough to think like, gosh, you know, what do I want that's not being done? And honestly, this just becomes more of a wish list type thing because what I really want to be made is a classic NECA Robocop, which I'm baffled that we haven't had in years. I mean, they have like uh, video game versions and there's a flight pack one, but just come on NECA, just, just, just give me, just give me classic Robocop. That's, that's all I'm asking. But as for actual toy lines, 
I haven't the faintest idea. There was a Kickstarter recently, which I think was very successful for Boglins. That was a classic from the childhood. But really, when you think about it, G.I. Joe, Thundercats, He-Man, Transformers, it's, it's all here for us, just waiting to take our money. Toys and Thoughts asks, which was your very first Marvel Legends action figure? And that's an easy one for me to answer. It is the Ben Riley Spider-Man. Ah, gosh, that was just a revelation moment when I was in a store in Japan with my girlfriend at the time. And I saw a Ben Riley Spider-Man action figure. And I was like, I wasn't even that familiar with Marvel Legends. I knew they were kind of a thing, like from, to, from the Toy Biz days and whatnot, but I hadn't really been into them. And then I saw they had done a perfect looking representation of Ben Riley, And I was like, oh! And I pulled the rope, I was like, this, do, do, do you know who this is? Do you know who this is? And she's like, it's not Spider-Man. I was like, no! Well, yes, but no. And I told her all about Ben Riley and blah, blah, blah. And then she bought me the figure. So I blame her because uh, the rest is history. Cincinnati Toy Collecting asks, if you had to fill a sports team with superheroes, what team or sport would they be? And who would the heroes be that you would choose? And whoo boy, that's uh, <laughs> that's a tough question because I don't, I don't, I don't do sports. <laughs> I'm not sure which superheroes I would want to kick the field goals into the baskets and score the touchdown points. I, I, I don't know. Uh, but I mean, if we're talking like team sports, let's let's just spitball this one a little bit. So, OK, like classic here in England is football, which I don't get. So actually, no, that's not, no, but let's, let's do cricket, actually. Cricket would be really fun. So we got specific places and like positions so uh for for the bowler someone who's got like a, a a good arm so probably who's like a thrower boomerang there you go so boomerang would be bowler uh then for the for the batsman you need someone who's good with like swinging a bat punisher there you go <laughs> he's you know I, I can either take casey jones from a turtles display or we'll have punisher for uh for the batsman then there's the uh the wicket keeper so who would be who would be in charge of, of wicket keeping? I'm looking around and I'm thinking, uh, actually the Hulk would be great because that wicket the wicket keeper is like cricket goalie. So Hulk would be there, boom, ready to catch that. And then for a fielder, you gotta have Doctor Octopus because you got six hands with which to catch the cricket ball. So there you go. That's my MCU cricket team. Rajesh Photography asks, which is your favorite anime and that's a tough one as well because I don't really watch any anime. I, I assume you mean like, you know, ongoing anime TV show. And like, I like some one-off films. Like I enjoy the Miyazakis and the classics like Akira, Street Fighter 2, you know, real sort of staple uh, anime films or manga films. But for ongoing series, I've never really been much into them. Uh, not that they're bad, it's just I don't really have the attention span often for long running shows. But I watched Cowboy Bebop. I really enjoyed Cowboy Bebop. So that had the great music with like the, the, the jazz and the Western kind of feel to it. That was a lot of fun. I love that kind of genre mashup of science fiction out of space with cowboys. That's, that's really great fun. So I dug Cowboy Bebop. And also I've got a special place in my heart uh, for One Piece because I was cast in a One Piece show a while ago. Didn't happen because of global events, but I feel like One Piece is gonna fa factor in my future uh, in some point in time, hopefully. But yeah, I would like people to recommend what is a good anime series that I should get into because I'm always open to new suggestions. Nick Sliz asks, how come you don't have any Toy Biz baths like the Sentinel or Galactus, for example? And I'm glad you asked. That's a very, very good question. And the reason I don't have them is because I live in hope that we're always going to get new ones. Because don't get me wrong, in particular, the Sentinel and Galactus look awesome. I really do think they, they still hold up to this day. And Apocalypse as well. So, you know, why didn't I get Apocalypse? Because when I started collecting Marvel Legends, we had just had the new Hasbro Apocalypse bath. So obviously I was like, well, that's the one I want, you know? So once I, I got that, I thought, well, I don't need another Apocalypse, even though the Toy Biz one is huge and badass and imposing. Like if I randomly stumbled upon him for a dirt cheap price, I would totally get him, but I don't really want to pay what he's worth. 
similar with the Sentinel. I was still like, I was holding out. I was like, ah, I'm sure Hasbro are gonna do a Sentinel at some point. And they did. And I got him pre-ordered. And in a couple of months time, he's gonna be touching down here. So I'm very excited about that. And finally, Galactus, I was still holding out. Like, will we get, especially once the Sentinel was announced, I was like, will we get a Haslab Galactus? Come on. And they're hinting, they're teasing us that we might get a Haslab Galactus coming, you know, next year. So if they do, oh, oh bejesus, take my money because I'm going to be buying them. AP3 The Collector writes, have you watched Buffy or Angel? And yes to both of them. I was a huge Buffy fan growing up in the late 90s. I have a lot of nostalgic memories and fondness for Buffy. I would watch it with uh, my mum and my sister. We were all really into it. So every week we would watch Buffy. And it still, I think, hold, holds up with the characters, the quips, the writing. It's a difficult one sometimes uh, in hindsight, just because Joss Whedon has, you know, kind of been outed a bit as not a very great person. Um, so it's one of those cases of separating the art from the artist. But I can do that. I can absolutely accept that like, oh, I might not like the person behind this music, wrestling, film, whatever, but I can still watch the media that they've created. And that goes for Buffy and Angel, absolutely. When I'm watching that, I still have a great time with it. And, you know, a lot of people didn't like the sort of quippy Whedon style that he brought to Avengers and stuff, but I think it worked really well for that. But too much would have been exactly that. It would have been too much. So I'm glad we just got, you know, the one great Avengers film from, from Whedon and then Age of Ultron was what it was. It wasn't a disaster, but it, just, like, it wasn't great. But it had some good stuff. But I'm glad that Marvel have evolved beyond him, which is, which is good. And uh, yeah, so bottom line, <laughs> Buffy and Angel are great. M3 asks, what is your favorite non-616 Spider-Man figure? And that is a... Tricky question. I'm I'm doing a little strokey beard here, thinking, well, the easiest thing to do is for me to just look at my Spider-Verse collection and think, you know what? Many of the Spider-Verse figures are 616. A lot of them are just ultimate costumes. But I think actually I really love PS4 Spidey. If we have to go outside the 616, then I think PS4 Spidey, mainly also because when I first saw that costume in the original game trailer, I was like, Ugh. I hope you can change that, a big ass white spider. It just didn't look good to me, but oh my goodness, that really grew on me. And now I really love that spider costume with the white accents on it. I think it works really well. It, it wouldn't be my 100% favorite spider outfit, but I think it's kind of cool. And I enjoyed Peter's portrayal in the PS4 game. I mean, God, that's the only game I have a platinum in. I loved that game. And I really want to play it on PS5, the remastered version with the slightly better looking facial models. Cause I didn't like, I, I like the actor who played him, but I didn't like the facial model. I thought he looked weird, a sort of a uncanny valley sort of look. So I think they've really improved that. So yeah, non 616 figure, I would say PS4 Spidey. Moon Joints asks, will you be doing any action figure photography? And the quick answer to that is no, I won't. But the longer answer is I thoroughly enjoy and appreciate action figure photography. And sometimes I will snap a picture for a thumbnail for a video. So I can kind of dabble in action figure photography, but it's not something that I really get a kick out of because to take really great pictures, like with lighting and sets and stuff, it, it takes time. And there's only so many hours in the day and I'm gonna use my time to make and edit videos. So that's where I put my creative efforts. But there are some uh, accounts that I follow that just do fantastic work. Uh, a particular one is VA Collector, does uh, such really fun, quirky, uh, articulated comic book art photos. So I'd highly recommend giving him uh, a follow. But yeah, I don't create this kind of artwork, but I do really appreciate it. Torek asks, what character with more than one figure has the worst representation in Marvel Legends? And, ooh boy, you're asking a, a big question there. And okay, just like off the top of my head, Venom. And that's gonna be a surprising one because let's face it, th there are tons of Venom figures and there are some really good ones there. But hear me out here, I just feel They've never quite got him right. I think the closest they got was the Absorbing Man, Venom, but he was a little bit too small. And, uh, you know, because he, he had two heads, that was great, but there wasn't enough variance in them either. So off the top, top of my head, you had 
absorbing man venom. And yeah, so he was a little bit undersized. Then you had the monster wave Eddie Brock venom and the, the, the Eddie Brock head, I think looked a bit weird, a bit too stylized. And again, the body's a bit too small. Uh, then you got like the two monster, the deluxe venoms, but uh, that's monster venom, the Matt Gargan one is good for Matt Gargan, but not Eddie Brock. And then the deluxe venom in that mold, I don't think Venom should be that big. He shouldn't be that size. That's not really a classic Venom. It's an interpretation of Venom, but not really a classic one. Then you've got the movie one, and I just don't like the movie's facial design. So I'm still waiting for an iconic Eddie Brock Venom. Ideally, uh, in, in the more modern style, I love the way... Is it Ryan Stegman? Maybe, but either way, I love the way that Eddie is drawn in the current Venom comics. He's got kind of like a snout to him and there's more character to his face. And I'd love to have that kind of Venom, maybe with an unmasked Eddie Brock head with the beard and longer hair. I think that would look great. So we're still waiting for that. The Real Lego Moves asks, how many figures do you have in your collection and how much do you spend per month or per year on figures? And the answer to that is approximately, I don't know, maybe 250 figures, maybe a hell of a lot more, maybe a hell of a lot less. I'm terrible at estimating. Somewhere between two and 300 figures, I think. No, it's not 300, it can't be that many. Probably 200, 200 figures, I think. How much do I spend on figures? Well, that's none of your business. <laughs> Gage's Collection asks, what is your favorite Marvel Legends figure or wave from last year? And that's another good question. We had a lot of really great figures last year, but the one that instantly springs to mind is the Venom wave, the uh, Venom pool wave. I, I love my Spider-Man, I love my symbiotes. It's difficult though, because my favorites of last year weren't really a wave and it's kind of a shame because it's the Spider-Man Retro collection, which is kind of a wave. They were released as a wave, but there was no builder figure. They were on the retro carded format. So it doesn't really feel like a wave. But if we will count that as a wave, then, then my goodness, absolutely. Gosh, if they came with, with a builder figure, Oh, that would have been the best wave ever, ever. That would have been like hands down easily, but that wasn't the case. They felt like individual figures that were just following a theme. So I think as a whole wave, it would probably be the, uh, yeah, the, the Venom Pool wave. Even though that had Venom Miles, who I didn't like, but still that bath was so good. Last year was a great year for figures. Posable Thumbs asks, what secondhand figure were you most excited about finding for sale online? And the one that instantly springs to mind for me is Rhino. I found a secondhand Rhino builder figure and Rhino was the final ultimate grail. I mean, of course there are still like lots of grails that I want, but they're not so, you know, important to get for me. For being such a huge Spider-Man fan, you've gotta have the Rhino. I mean, come on, get out of here. Of course you need a Rhino. And I didn't have one. So yeah, when I saw the Rhino being sold for what I felt was a really decent price, oh, <laughs> I just, I nearly sprained my, my fingers like tapping away uh, to claim him. So yeah, I was thrilled to get the Rhino. Marvel Pops asks, who is your favorite street level character? And again, that's a really good question. And there's a big variance, like a, that, that's a broad range because, you know, a lot of Spider-Man characters are street level, but they can totally, you know, have like cosmic adventures and stuff. I mean, you know, Venom is currently fighting a god at the moment. So street level, I try to think like, like grittier, sort of more down to earth kind of basic characters. And it's a tough one. I mean, it would be so easy for me to just say Scarlet Spider because, you know, Ben Riley is a very down to earth kind of character. And since it is easy to say that, I think I will. So yeah, Ben Riley or uh, Kane, either one of the Scarlet Spiders, whenever a Spider-Man character is based in the real world, in like in the city, that's when they're at their best. When spider cat characters start going off into outer space or dealing with mystical things or alternate realities, I'm like, oh, no, 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 you're losing me. Spider-Man Spider and his various brothers and clones should be gritty street level based. And when they are, that's when they're at their best. Marvel Blueprints asks, with regards to the thing and his anatomy, do you think that when he, no, no, I'm not answering that. Mr. Fig Freak asks, are there any horror characters that you are hoping to be made or that you're looking forward to possibly being produced? Another really good question. And what I'm thinking at the moment is there are so many, I mean, of course you've got to go to NECA and there are so many that they have made that are just, 
fantastic. And NECA are just looking for different versions and iterations of characters to be made. Like, it's not enough for them to make one Jason Voorhees, they've got to make one representation from every film, which is awesome. Same with Freddy Krueger or Michael Myers. I love that. I'm a big, big horror fan, so I really appreciate that. So most of my horror franchises that I'm really into have been catered for and really well catered for too. I, I still need a, a NECA alien at some point. But yeah, as far as horror characters, I've got Predator, Freddy, Jason, Michael Myers. Uh, I'm really, really pleased with those. So going back to a previous answer, I'd love a, you know, uh, a NECA Robocop would be great, but that's not really horror. But I think most horror characters are covered and I love what they've done with them. Carlo asks, what are your criteria when buying a figure? And that's actually a very per pertinent question because just recently I've declined or talked myself out of buying figures that normally I would have jumped at. And I was gonna do a little video on that, but basically I'm kind of at the stage where I feel like I've, I've got sort of all the most kind of iconic characters that, that I really want. So I now have to ask myself, does this figure actually really spark joy in me? Is there something really unique about it? Because I just cancelled the House of X wave because I was like, they look cool, but I don't have really huge nostalgia for House of X. I've got classic 90s X-Men. Why do I need modern X-Men? They're just more figures taking up more space, more dusting. I don't need them. It would be nice to have them, but I could save that money and then spend it on something that I really want. So that's kind of my criteria now is like, do I actually need it or am I just buying it because it's being released? And also, I, like, I have to ask, is this a figure that I really, really want or is it just to tick a box to, you know, fill some criteria? Like I just turned down buying Ultimate Spider-Woman, even though like I, I wanted her to complete my Spider my Spider-Verse collection. But then I was thinking to myself, you know, once I get her, she's just gonna go in the case and then collect dust and I'm not even gonna really look at her. So I thought, no, you know what? You don't need her, Dave. Who are you trying to impress, huh? It Action Figures asks, what was the first figure that started it all? And of course, I answered that previously, Ben Riley Spider-Man. BBS Collectibles asks, do you have any tips or advice for creating more interesting displays? And secondly, are you going to get any more Mortal Kombat figures, McFarlane Mortal Kombat figures? Well, as far as displays are concerned, my biggest kind of rule, and actually this is how I started this channel originally, was doing display videos. But basically, try to, in, just for me, <laughs> for me, try to keep things multi, multi-layered and fill up any negative space. But that's the fine line, which is filling up negative space, but not having clutter. If there's too much clutter, you things tend to get lost. So there are certain things that I don't like. Uh, I, I don't I, I don't like characters suspended from like if it's Spider-Man on a web line or a flying character that's got some fishing wire that he's just hanging from. I, don't, I just don't think. For me personally, I just I just don't like it. Uh, I don't know why, but it just doesn't doesn't resonate with me. Also, characters sort of um, char characters kneeling on the ground. I'm not I'm not fond of. Sometimes I'll do that if if there's such a impossibility to stand. But generally, yeah, I like to have them sort of standing, kind of posed and proud and what have you. Uh, I love teams and themes. Teams and themes is the way to go. So I'll have a lot of my figures, you know, d d divided by street level heroes or street level villains. Um, that's kind of it. But really, you just you just got to follow your heart, man. And for the second question, for Mortal Kombat figures, I have Scorpion, Shao Kahn, and Spawn. And I was thinking of getting more, but then I was like, you know what? I I won't, because even though I'll never afford them, I, I would love the Storm collectible figures. And the problem is, if I get the McFarlane ones, I'll always just look at them and be like, ah, you're good, but you just make me want the Storm ones more. So I'm gonna draw a line on the McFarlane figures. They're, they're nice. I was very tempted to get like Liu Kang and Baraka, but you know what? I don't need them. I'll, I'm happy with those three. I'll stick with that. My Anime Heroes writes, what is the rarest figure in your collection and how did you acquire it? And that's really tough. I don't know what my rarest figure is because I don't really, honestly, I don't have anything that is particularly rare because these are all kind of, you know, Marvel Legends from the last five years or so, six, seven, maybe at a push. So I think, you know, my, my two brand new MAS Transformers, I guess, are 
rare in as much as they probably you know weren't made in a huge number but i don't know if you really call, call that that rare i suppose you've got like a couple of grail ish type figures like the rhino builder figure the lizard builder figure but still those aren't crazy rare they're just expensive so yeah i don't have anything i'm looking around thinking yeah do i have anything that's super rare Nah, not really. The, the 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 real value in them is just the the, the joy that I have from from you know looking looking at them on display. Uh, and how did I acquire them? Money, lots of money. <laughs> Collector one one seven asks, what figures are you tempted to buy, or what lines have you been tempted to buy but have not yet pulled the trigger on? But you know you're curious about. That's me paraphrasing the question. But there's a perfect answer to that actually, and that is the Super Seven figures, particularly He-Man and Lion-O, Thundercats. Because I was thinking to myself, once I got the gorgeous-looking Transformers, I was like, oh, you know what? I've got the NECA Turtles. I can do like an '80s display with some GI Joe, Lion-O, He-Man. That would be great. And I was looking at He-Man, the Super Seven He-Man in Forbidden Planet today, and I was like. It's really expensive <laughs> for what it is, and that's kind of what put me off. It was like yeah, it would be cool, it would be cool to have, but like it's 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 just it's not much beyond a Marvel Legend, but it's about you know three times the price. Ah, uh, I just couldn't I couldn't justify it. I thought nah, it's not it's not worth it, and that's always going to be the case. It's just the price, you know. The sculpting and modeling looks great. That Super Seven He Man looks really cool. It's like classic 80s like cartoon he-man but just made to look a bit more sort of modern kind of badass sort of uh, sculpting and molding and physiology i thought it looked really cool but i was like nah not at that price pal shattered ghoul art asks did you ever collect vintage star wars figures and yes i did i collected them when they weren't vintage when they were just star wars figures so in the 80s like any kid in the 80s i got star wars figures for birthdays and christmases and eventually they were sold off and given away in car boot sales and whatnot but yeah i still remember having an atat or an 8080 which is the i know there's like an official one that you should call it probably an 8080 because the other one is an ATST, and you don't call that an ATST. So, yeah, I had an ATAT. -AT. That just sounds stupid calling it that. Anyway, I had one of those, and I loved playing with that. That was a huge highlight memory of my childhood, was having an ATAT. -AT. So, uh, yeah, I did used to collect them, but that was a long time ago in a galaxy pretty much similar to this one. Charlie asks, settle this debate. Black costume storm or white costume storm? And, ah, oh, that's tough. You know what though, I, I'll plant my flag in the ground. White costume is nostalgic 90s classic, but I actually think the black costume looks cooler. I was so reluctant to get the black costume figure. I only got her because I wanted to have her look from the uh, Ben Riley X-Men, Spider-Man team up book. And then when I got her in hand, I was like, this figure looks badass. Luke asks, when did you first start collecting Marvel Legends? And that would be back in about 2015 when I got my Ben Riley Spider-Man figure. But I didn't really start collecting, collecting. Because you know how it is, the old story. You think, I'll just get this one figure. Then I was like, you know what? I'll just get the Clone Saga figures. So I'll get Ben Riley Spider-Man, Scarlet Spider, and Peter Parker. And then it just went on and here we are now. Ramra asks, what do you think of the Eternals and how much do you know about them? And this is easy. I know nothing about the Eternals. I know they're like classic old characters that have been used quite a bit. They're kind of spacey, they're like related to the Celestials. The point is, I've tried to avoid learning anything about them because this upcoming movie is the first Marvel movie ever where I'm like, I'm going in blind. I know nothing about this and I kind of like that. So I haven't read any of the old comics. I haven't gone onto the wiki. When a trailer comes out, I might not even watch a trailer. I'm like, I want to go in for the first time ever, have a unique experience Go in there knowing nothing about the Eternals, no preconceived notions, and see what they got for me. Murdoch Modrock asks, how many figures do you own? And as I was racking my brains earlier, I don't know, about 200-ish, give or take. Probably more by the end of this video, most likely. Rumble asks, if you could make your own Sinister Six, who would be in it and why? And that's kind of a fun question. So a Sinister Six of characters that haven't been used in a Sinister Six before, I would like to try and think of what equivalents would work. So for the Doc Ock equivalent, uh, I would definitely take the uh, Norman Osborn 
from the Spider-Verse, Spider-Geddon storyline. So the, the six-armed Norman Osborn, because that's perfect. You've got all, all the arms, you've got the scheming mind. That works really well. Then for the Sandman equivalent, I would take uh, Spider-Side. Actually, that's that's great, Spider-Side. So that's that sort of, either that flowing, shape-shifting kind of character. That works great. Then for Electro, um, I have to circle back around to Electro. For the Vulture, what flying character? What flying character would be good that we haven't sort of done or covered or like an old man type character? Oh, that's tough. You know what? I might have... I might have got to a stage where I really should have thought harder about this first. Um, for the Craven role for the Sinister Six, I would easily go for um, uh, Bullseye. Bullseye is, is a great sort of mercenary there. So you've got Spider Side, Norman Osborn, Bullseye for the Mysterio type role. So sort of magic-ish kind of figure or sort of illusion type figure. Um, even though he's not really a team person, maybe I could bring back Judas Traveller in some way, because I really hated what they did with that character, but I liked Judas Traveller. So then we have Electro and Vulture left. And for those two, is there a female? There is a female Electro. And so that's a really cheap, easy answer, but throw female Electro in there as well. And for the Vulture role, maybe, maybe Lady Beetle, because she's a flying character. There you go. That's a hodgepodge Sinister Six right there. Rob asks, do you think we'll get any more MCU War Machine figures? And I don't see why not, but also I don't see why we would, because we've got most versions. So I think it's inevitable. Just like, you know, do you think we'll get any more Han Solo figures? Yeah, eventually, uh, because, you know, things will be remade and stuff, and the Avengers films are going to be fairly iconic for many years. So I'm sure that we will get new versions of the classic heroes. I don't think we're going to see any new War Machine uh, figures anytime soon, though. I know that we're getting the Avengers Endgame figures, but I don't think War Machine will be included in that. I might be wrong, but I don't know if people are clamoring for a new War Machine, because we've got Civil War War Machine, we've got um, Avengers Infinity War War Machine with the big bulky War Machine, so I think that might tie people over for a while. So I'm sure we will get another War Machine, but probably not anytime soon. Disassembled Avenger asks, what would your definitive Spider-Man suit look like? And that's really tough. So, I mean, obviously there is the classic Spider-Man costume, but I do love the way that the Ben Riley one updated it with the bigger black spider that went all the way around. And I loved, I loved the gloves with the different colored fingers and the half boot. I thought that was a great update. Of, of the costume. Although honestly, I actually kind of like Spider-Man costumes that don't have the webbing all over them. I think it's not really needed. So like if I could just brainstorm or spitball my own kind of ideal costume, I would say the Ben Riley Spider-Man costume, but without the webs, for me, I think that would actually look pretty cool because it's more bold, more sleek designs. And especially with the metal web shooters on the outside. I think those break up the costume really well. So there you go. That's my ideal Spider-Man costume. And guys, that does it for the Q&A for this, I don't know, season, I guess. <laughs> what I was trying to imply with that was that I would happily do this again. I really enjoyed doing these Q&As and obviously those were all completely action figure related, but it could be kind of fun to go outside the box ne next time. So when I do a QA, and uh, I'll kind of broaden the horizons to just anything because um, it's fun talking about myself and what I do. You know, it's, it's nice making that kind of personal connection. But in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for watching this. If you got here to the end, this video was way longer than I was expecting. But thank you everyone who contributed questions. I will definitely uh, be doing this again at some point in the future. So until then and until next time, keep displaying moral behavior. But I could definitely see that resemblance there. A few other people also say, and this might be sort of uh, to my own horn. <laughs>